it is finally time to talk about my favorite books of 2019. If you're new here and you didn't know, I dedicate the month of December to rereads because one, I love rereading my favorite books, and two, it takes a lot of the pressure off of me for these end of the year videos, getting them out in a certain time because I've already read all of the books that I'm going to read for the first time this year. So I have no books that will sneak onto this list that I'm going to read in the last week of this year. Let's talk about my favorites. I have a list of 15 books and I did not put them in any particular order. So we're not working our way down from number 15 all the way up to number one. These are just, these are the books that we're talking about. Oh, but first I should give you some stats. So let's talk about genres within this top 15 list. I had five fantasy books, three horror, two romance and two tragedy, one historical fiction, one nonfiction, and one that falls under the adventure category. As far as modern versus classic novels, I have nine modern novels and six classic novels on this list. Now let's talk about them. The first book on this list is going to be On Luna Time. I also loved In Light of Luna, but I loved On Luna Time a little bit more, so that's the one on this list. This is a time travel romance. Not something that you would think that I would love, but here I am. This is about a young girl on her, I believe, 18th birthday. She learns that her family can time travel. They can go either back or forward in time. All they have to do is jump off a pier in the middle of a snow, in the middle of a storm at midnight on her birthday. No big deal. It's a rough ride, but she finds herself in, I wanna say 1942. This girl has no family, has grown up in the foster care and has no connection to her family, but desperately wishes that she did. She does find romance in 1942, but the other thing that she finds is a stack of old journals from her family that have also traveled around this time. And through those journals, she gets to know her family and learn about her family history. So there is a big emphasis on family history. Throughout books one and two, there are so many different things that are woven together. I'm so impressed with this author's ability to make this simple yet complex in a format of such a cute little story. This is also a self-published book, so if you love supporting self-published authors, you should check it out. Next, I have Pet Cemetery, which I think I did a full review for. If I did, I'll link it in the corner and in the description. Pet Cemetery is the first Stephen King novel I ever picked up and still my favorite. I love when books explore really dark and heavy topics. This one explores grief and it does it, in my opinion, brilliantly. This is about a young family that moves to a new location and they find that there is this pet cemetery nearby. It's actually on their property, way off yonder. Kids go and bury their pets in the cemetery and then some things happen, it's unnatural. I've recommended this book a lot on my channel and I've had some people come back and say that they love it and some people come back and say, they thought it was really predictable. And to that I say, fair. I really don't think that there's anything shocking that happens in this horror novel, but I also don't think that's the point. I really enjoyed the story of this book, but what I loved the most was the exploration of grief. We start off with a pet that passes away, then we escalate it to something else and then escalate it and then escalate it and escalate it. And King did a brilliant job of showing the different levels and stages of grief. You see grief that hurts, but then as you escalate it, you see people handling it in different ways and processing it oh, so well. I actually read this book shortly after my grandpa passed away and he is one of the closest people in my life. So it was really hard. And as odd as it is to say, this horror novel helped me process my own grief. I know that King worked closely with different grief counselors as well as other people as he created this novel. And honestly, I think it shows. I thought the story itself was great, but I thought the meaning behind the novel was genius. Next on my list is The Count of Monte Cristo. This is my first time reading this book. I had never watched the movie before, so it was such a shock and I, oh my goodness. I thought that this book was brilliant. We follow a young man, I believe Edmund. He's a really sweet guy. He's a wonderful guy and he winds up in jail and he doesn't know why. And we get to slowly watch him change. Then we get an abrupt change and he takes on a whole new personality with a whole new goal in mind and it's revenge. I loved this book because we start out knowing more than Edmund. We see his demise and how it went down and he doesn't understand it. Then we watch him in prison slowly change and learn about what went down. And then the narrative shifts and suddenly he knows a lot more than we do. He takes on a new personality and he has a new goal and he has a masterful 
large plan to get his revenge and we as the readers don't get it. So now we're following him along while he reveals, while, while we watch it all unfold. And it's so intricate and it's so exciting to watch go down. But then we also watch our sweet, innocent boy turn into something worse than what he was trying to get revenge against. I don't wanna say anything more than that. I know that this is a really well-known story, so you probably already know a lot about it, but I loved the way this was executed. I think that it was on a similar level to The Lies of Black Lamora, which is my favorite series, but the intricacies of the things that he does to take down not only the people who harmed him, but their entire families. Oh my goodness, it was so good. He's not a good guy, but it was a good book. Next on my list is The Nightingale, which is a historical fiction. Historical fiction isn't a genre that I read a lot of, but I'm trying to do better because I do enjoy it. The Nightingale follows two women during World War II, and they're both experiencing the war very differently. One woman has a husband and a child, and she's just trying to survive and take care of her daughter. The other is young and naive, but very brave, and she is going to openly fight. And by openly, I mean not openly at all. Good, good summary. But she's gonna do a lot of stuff behind the scenes to make a difference in the war. These two women are handling what's happening around them very differently, but both of their stories are so beautiful and they both end up being such impactful characters. It was tough to read. It wasn't flawless, it wasn't perfect, but man, was it good. Very impactful, beautiful story. Next on my list, speaking of The Lies of Locke Lamora, I read The Lies of Locke Lamora in 2019. Stand up on your own, sir. And I read Red Seas Under Red Skies, as well as Republic of Thieves in 2019. So then I read that in 2018, and I read these in 2019. Don't worry about it. This is my favorite series of all time. It's unfinished, so. There's room for me to change my mind, but holy cow, I love this series. I know a lot of people don't love books two and three as much as they do book one, and that's fine, live your life. I love them all. Book one is still my favorite, but oof, they all deserve to be on this list. So The Lies of Locke Lamora follows this ragtag gang of orphans who are taught to be swindlers, thieves, and liars. We get to follow them then and now. So the timeline, the way he wrote it, it does take a lot of getting used to because it's not your typical setup in that structure, but the way it's set up is brilliant once you get used to it. We get to see them growing up and learning their life lessons. And then we also get to see them pulling off the greatest and most complex scheme Ooh, it's so good. This is a very character focused series where the main fellows are really what you're in for. And then the plot is just ugh, so good as well, but it's very, very, very slow moving. So I feel like it's good for everybody because both sides are so well executed. You do have to give it a little bit of time with book one though, because like I said, the writing style is pretty difficult to get into and it is a slow moving story. So give it a little bit of time, but oh, 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 book one, we're pulling off the greatest heist ever. Book two, we're pirates for hire through blackmail. And book three is very political and government structure E. But all of them follow the best friendship probably I've ever read. Give me a strong monogamous friendship where they would die for each other and I will eat it up. And I don't think I've ever seen friends like Locke and Jean. Next is the fifth season. Um, whew. The fifth season is, it takes place in a time where the world is dying and it's desperate times and it's a dark world. We follow a young girl, a woman who's been here for a long time and a second person narrative that's told as you did this, you, etc. There's a purpose to it, even though it's kind of rough to read. There's a whole lot of world building in this series, arguably more world building than anything else. Book one was, oh, just masterfully crafted. I loved this author's writing style. She would say the most simple things, but the way she would say it would pack the biggest punch. It's very, 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 very dark, um, but also so moving and impactful and beautiful. It's a Nigerian-based fantasy series, and man, one of the best written books, in my opinion, and the way, the reason there's a perspective told from you when you get to the point of that reveal, it's so satisfying. Unfortunately, book one was my favorite of the three, but 
but it was still unbelievable. Next book is Beauty and the Beast, which is a classic fairy tale. So the Beauty and the Beast is, ah, uh, it's, it's a tough one for me because I grew up with this story and I loved this story, but you also have whew, quite a story. I loved the intricacies of this spell. I loved the situation that these characters are forced into and how it all plays out. I loved seeing the origin of a story that I've seen told a thousand times. In general, I just really love going back and reading the origins of stories that are really popular now, and I almost always tend to love the first story the best. So I'm sure there's some nostalgia and just general excitement of of discovering the original that's wrapped up in why I love this so much. But regardless, I, I just think that it's a great story. It was originally written to be as a comfort for young women who are married away by their families to older, not so nice guys to basically tell them, hey, give him a little bit of time. Turns out he might be worth it. So the origin isn't awesome, but I still really love the story. I will say though, it is unfortunate beauty how she's written is unfortunate. She's definitely better in every retelling I've been given because boy, is she shallow in this one. Next on the list is Wheel of Time book four. I started the Wheel of Time series this year and I am six books in and I'm really enjoying myself. And so far my favorite of the six that I've read has been book four. Wheel of Time is a series that the first book leaned heavily on um, the Lord of the Rings for its inspiration. And it really branched off and it became its own thing. The world is massive. The character list is huge. And the personal growth of these characters as they go through what they're going through is just, ooh, so, so good to watch unravel. My favorite character is Perrin. So if you've read the series, you're not surprised that this is my favorite book. I also just think in general, there are so many characters that really begin their character arc begin and start becoming incredible people in book four. Next book on my list is The Name of the Wind. This is a story that follows, I guess it's, I guess it's kind of a then and now story as well. We start off meeting this innkeeper who is a little bit surly. A storyteller comes, I don't actually remember what he's called in the book, but he comes and he wants to collect this innkeeper's story. His name is Kavoth, and Kavoth doesn't really want people to know his story, except he kind of loves talking about himself. So this is being told by Kavoth. And then we also get little interruptions where we're in the present with Kavoth again, but for the most part, we're watching him grow up. We start with him as a child. He grows up, he goes through school. He's having a lot of first, it's an experience. The magic in this story is fantastic. It deals with both a hard magic system and a soft magic system, which is hard for me because I'm definitely a hard magic system kind of reader. So the soft side of the magic is, is very difficult for me because I love laws and rules and bounds on my magic. I don't like, and not having that. But it's still really, really cool. Kaboth is a very fascinating character to follow. It's a very slow story, but the way it's written makes it so easy to read very fast. I loved this book. Oh yeah, I have a full review up there, down below. Next book on this list is The Troop. So funny story, I recommended this book to a good friend of mine after I finished it, cause I knew she'd love it. And she did love it, but after she read it, it was, she said that it was the most effed up thing she's ever read, which I didn't get that impression. So I don't know if there's something wrong with me, but just go in knowing it's apparently pretty messed up. I mean, like I knew it was kind of twisted, but whatever. So this follows a group of Boy Scouts who are on an island. And it turns out that there's this infection thing that's happening on the island and it's a little bit horrifying. There are these little worms that can crawl inside your skin if you have a cut anywhere on your body. And when they crawl inside your skin, they start eating you from within. They also start reproducing like mad. So they're just continually and constantly eating you up and reproducing more and more. So it's, it'll kill you. But it's a bit of a brutal death. You get so hungry that you can't control what you do. It's a pretty interesting story, just that alone, but what I really loved was the dynamic of the troop when they started having to make really tough decisions as the infection broke out amongst them. I also loved the ending of this book. It is specifically body horror, which uh, it's so, it's very gruesomely detailed about 
what's going down with the bodies of these infected people. So if that doesn't sound fun for you, then, you know, skip it. But it was fun for me. Am I? I, I don't know how to not sound... I, what are you gonna do? I'm talking about horror. Next on my list is I Am Legend, which is another horror. This is about a man. There's been some sort of breakout of vampires. He's holed up in his little, in his little home and the vampires, they come out at night and they wanna kill him. I just, I really like classic horror a lot. It's a totally different ball game from modern horror. And I, I love the environment and the feeling of classic horror. It's not, I wouldn't say it's usually as scary as modern horror, but it's a different level of, of suspense. And I just really enjoy it a lot. So I love that element of it, even though vampires aren't really my thing. I know the movie changed it to zombies, and I think I like that antagonist villain roadblock more than vampires, but I do think that it was written very well in this book. But I think the thing that I enjoyed the most is how intelligent this protagonist was. The stuff that he had to reason through and how he had to figure out how to deal with the situation around him was just so much fun to read and watch him figure out. I know this book isn't for everybody, but man, I really enjoyed reading it. Next book on this list is Wuthering Heights. I read this book because my friend hated it and told me about it and I thought, I kind of want to hate it too. So I read it expecting to hate it and I loved it. I know that there's a lot of conversation about what kind of book this is. Some people call it a romance, some people call it uh, a revenge story, but if you look at what it's published under, it's published as a tragedy and I 100% 100, 100 believe that that is true. This is a story following quite a few people, but the main fellow comes from a very sad story. He was raised by a man who did not love him and did not treat him well, and it's really devastating. And he grew up to hate this man. But unfortunately, Heathcliff didn't deal with his past and instead became the man that he hated more than anyone else in the world. To me, this is a tragedy. To me, this is a story about becoming what you look at the most. It's about a cycle of abuse and how it can continue if it doesn't get dealt with. And this happens in multiple people throughout this story of people who are treated terribly as they're raised and then they grow up to be the picture of who they hate more than anyone else in the world. I thought it was a really powerful story. I thought that it was a story that really showed the cycle of abuse and how it can continue instead of breaking free from it. It does end on a romantic note, so I see why people kind of have the idea that it's supposed to be a romance, but I don't think so at all. I think it's supposed to be a tragedy showing the demise of a family that can't get past itself and its own cycle. I thought it was a really powerful story and I really want to reread it soon and do a full review on it because I also find it very personal because I see a lot of myself in it. I see how, I, it's kind of like a, a window of who I could have become if I didn't work through my own trauma. It's a rough read, but man, is it a good one. Tess of the D'Ubervilles. I've never said it right. You always tell me in the comments how to say it and I still don't know. This is another tragedy. So I guess the point of this story is Thomas Hardy is trying to write about the injustice and hypocrisy of Victorian culture that he hated so much. And I think he did a great job at it. This is about a beautiful, strong woman named Tess and her life being manipulated, lied to and mistreated by the men around her, starting with her dad, moving on to her lover, and then eventually her husband. And it is a tragedy, so like don't go in thinking that it's a happy story or anything, but I found it really moving, really powerful. Yes. It's a tough read. Tess is a beautiful heroine, probably one of the best female leads I've read, especially in a classic. And I appreciate this book so much. This is another one that I wanna reread very soon. And I'm ending it on a nonfiction. Would this be a favorites list if Frederick Bachman weren't on it? Things my son needs to know about the world. So Fe Frederick Bachman is one of my favorite authors of all time, probably my, my number one favorite. He primarily writes dark, heavy contemporaries. So stories that deal with really tough subjects. And this, I think is his first nonfiction book and it was 
oh, it was so good. It is a collection of letters that he wrote to his son. It talks about his own experiences as a dad. It talks about his insecurities and the stuff that he's working through. It talks about the highs of being a dad and how amazing it is to watch his boy grow up. It's pretty wordy and rambly at times, but it's always with a purpose. And Bachman has this way of writing, starting off his stories, which this is a collection of letters, but starting off his works with this odd rambly thing that makes you think, where are you going, man? And then he does a narrative shift and suddenly it punches you so hard in the heart. There were so many times when I was reading stuff and I was like, get to your point, man. And then he'd hit that narrative shift and I realized what he was doing the whole time and realized how important it all was. And then I'd be crying. I read quite a few of these to Corey as well. And I have some more that I want him to read. Um, not every single letter in here was impactful to me, but so many of them were and I just wanna pass it out to parents. So there's a whole big bunch of books that I really loved this year. I'd love to know if you have read any of these and what you thought of them, if you picked any of them up because of me. So be sure to chat with me more about these in the comments. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon.